and welcome back again with us. This episode of Military TV is brought to you about FGM-148 Javelin. The Javelin is a man-portable, fire-and-forget anti-tank missile employed by dismounted infantry to defeat current and future threat armored combat vehicles. It is intended to exchange the Dragon system in the Army and the Marine Corps. In other words, Javelin is a tactical precision engagement system that enhances the Army's ability to dominate the ground maneuver battle. Its impact on scout capabilities are going to be significant. It will allow dismounted scouts to execute reconnaissance and combat patrols with a relatively lightweight thermal sight and also give dismounted patrols the potential of handling unexpected armor vehicle threats. After having a bit of Javelin's introduction, it's a must for us to know the history of Javelin. The Javelin was designed in the 70s and 80s when the leaders of the U.S. military had nightmares about being overrun by endless hordes of Soviet tanks, a fear worsened by the generally poor performance of the M47 Dragon missile in use at the time. However, the Javelin finally entered service with the U.S. military in 1996 after the Cold War had ended and first saw action in 2003 during the U.S. invasion of Iraq. In 1989, the U.S. Army awarded a contract for the development of Javelin as a replacement for the M47 Dragon anti-tank missile. The Javelin joint venture was formed by Texas Instruments, now Raytheon Missile Systems, of Dallas, Texas, and Lockheed Martin Electronics and Missiles of Orlando, Florida, U.S., and now known as Missiles and Fire Control. The Javelin entered full-rate production in 1994, and the system was first deployed in June 1996 by the U.S. Army at Fort Benning, Georgia. The Javelin system saw operational service with the U.S. Army and Marine Corps, as well as the Australian Special Forces during Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, and it is currently deployed in Afghanistan. The Command Launch Unit, CLU, is also being used in surveillance operations. The standalone mode usage of the CLU was proved to be effective in target detection and battlefield reconnaissance when it was deployed in Afghanistan and Iraq. More than 2,000 rounds have been fired by the U.S. and coalition forces. The missile achieves a higher rate of 4,750 meters during demonstration in February 2013. Five javelins were successfully fired as part of the joint exercise called UWS between the Indian and U.S. armies in June 2013. A javelin missile was successfully test-fired from a turret at Cranfield Ordnance Test and Evaluation Center, COTEC, in May 2014. In April 1991, the first test flight of the javelin succeeded, and in March 1993, the first test firing from the launcher succeeded. In 1994, low levels of production were authorized and the first javelins were deployed with U.S. Army units in 1996. Before we talk about how the system works, let's see the specifications of the javelin. Based on javelin fielding schedule, the javelin has The system is deployed and prepared to fire in less than 30 seconds, and the reload time is less than 20 seconds. And while the missile is mounted on the CLU and the gunner engages the target using the sight on the CLU by placing a cursor box over the image of the target. The gunner locks on the automatic target tracker in the missile by sending a lock on before launch command to the missile. When the system is locked on, the missile is ready to fire and the gunner does not carry out post launch tracking or missile guidance. Unlike laser beam riding or conventional wire or fiber optic cable guided missiles, Javelin is autonomously guided to the target after launch, leaving the gunner free to reposition or reload immediately after launch. A soft launch ejects the missile from the launch tube to give a low recoil shoulder launch. The soft launch enables firing from inside buildings or covered positions. Once the missile is clear, the larger propellant in the second stage is ignited and the missile is propelled towards the target. The weapon has two attack modes, direct or top attack. The gunner selects direct attack mode to engage covered targets, bunkers, buildings, and helicopters. The top attack mode is selected against tanks, in which case the javelin climbs above and strikes down on the target to penetrate the roof of the tank where there is least armor protection. The missile is launched at an 18 degrees elevation angle to reach a peak altitude of 150 meters in top attack mode and 50 meters in direct fire mode. The Javelin CLU has a sophisticated infrared sensor with multiple viewing modes, including 4x optical zoom, a 4x greenlit thermal view, and a 12x narrow vision zoom activated for targeting. The seeker in the missile even provides a fourth 9x thermal viewing mode. 
The CLU can therefore serve as a handy scanning device for the infantry. The thermal viewers on the Javelin needs to be cooled off to function well, which theoretically takes 30 seconds, but might take a bit longer if you're in Baghdad and it's a breezy 120 degrees at noon. Once the firer acquires a target, locks the infrared seeker onto it, and pulls the trigger, the Javelin missile is ejected out of the CLU without using its rocket motor in a soft launch, creating relatively little backblast. The missile launch backblast not only makes it easy for opposing forces to spot the launcher after firing, but can also make launching while inside a confined space, a building, a deadly risk. So the Javelin's small backblast is very handy for keeping the operator alive. Still, the launch does blow back some gas, so you don't want to stand directly behind it. In any case, the Javelin missile remains one of the United States' most potent systems on the ground, and one that seems to increase in capability and be deployed on a greater number of platforms. Its presence or absence on battlefields around the world will remain both consequential and highly scrutinized. That's all we can share with you today. Don't forget to get access to my other videos. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.